So, Paul. So, Matt. <laughs> as the senior producer of this podcast, I think it's appropriate I come on the show to help us mark an important milestone. Do you know what episode this is? I, I had no idea until I looked at my calendar and it said we're going to have a discussion about the 100th episode. So I'm, I'm guessing it's the 100th episode. Yeah, that's great that as a producer, I'm sending you calendar invites for recordings. Yes, this is absolutely <laughs> right. This is the 100th episode. We've had 100 episodes, 100 world-changing ideas. I would say my lab has been consumed over the last few years with this really reliable result that people underestimate how positive others will feel when you reach out to them in a, in a pro-social positive way. Often it's binary. People are like, it's really nature that matters or it's really nurture that matters. And I think that's really kind of a false distinction. If you went to a restaurant and someone at the end of the, you know, of your meal was like, which was more important to you, having a chair to sit in or having salt in your food? Like that would be a nonsensical question. Like you obviously need both of those things in order to enjoy your meal. But I will say over the last 10 years, I, I'm edging closer to the idea that it might not be that hard to go from chemistry to life. And so okay. there, it, I'd say there's a higher probability now than what I used to think that life is common on other planets. It's actually utterly remarkable to me that, that we've gone through so many and, and we learn more every single time. And really it's just been, it's really just been an incredible journey so far. We're living without national sentimentality for the first time since the 19th century, maybe the late 18th century. Right um, now we're not. Right now. And, what, and tell me what you mean more by that. We're living without national sentimentality. We're living, we're living without a normative sense that to be American means to have something in common with other people who are members of the set. And we don't have that anymore. I think it's been completely wrecked. So cancer immunotherapy is anything that would activate your immune response to recognize and kill or, or help the immune system kill tumor cells. We can almost look at a periodic table uh, at an element, if it's a solid element, and say, oh, there's a really a third dimension to this table, uh, which has to do with how big the atoms are, or how big the um, crystals are. Mm. Uh, and, and, and that's a, a very rich topic that has, it turns out, lots of consequences for how we make materials and, and what, what kind of uh, properties they have. So we're gonna have a little quick celebration here for the 100th, give our listeners a little behind the scenes look at the podcast and talk about what's to come next for Big Greens. All right, awesome, awesome, let's do it. And Paul, can I do the intro for once? Do not mess it up, all right? Y yes, go right ahead. I'll do my best. Okay. From the University of Chicago Podcast Network, this is Big Brains, a podcast about the pioneering research and pivotal breakthroughs that are reshaping our world. On this episode, our hundredth celebration, I'm your producer, Matt Hodap. Not bad at all, I, I think uh, I I've got a challenger. At least a 7 out of 10, I think. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, Paul, every good scientific discovery starts with a hypothesis. And I would say Big Brains is an amazing discovery of a podcast. So what was the hypothesis behind this show? Because it actually started before I got here. You know, the, the, the idea that came up for this is, number one, I, I had never done a podcast before, but I was a, a, a big fan of different podcasts. And, and I knew what captivated me. And... Um, I had been here at the University of Chicago as the head of communications, and, and truly every day I met somebody just utterly remarkable. And, and not only were they extraordinary in what they were studying and what their research was, but almost overwhelmingly they were just really lovely people. And, and I found that I was just having great conversations with them, and, and, and I thought, you know, what a great idea to have a podcast, just to treat it almost as a... A, a, a dinner conversation with somebody whose life's work we're going to get a chance to explore. Try to do it in such a way that when I'm talking to people in general, and if I don't understand something, I would say, I'm sorry, I don't understand what you're telling me. Um, can you try it a different way? And, 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 and almost inevitably, they would say, sure, let me try it a different way. Because a lot of these folks, of course, are teachers. And so they're used to trying to finding different ways to help people understand what it is they're sharing. And so the idea was, why don't we just, the best way we can help people understand not only what's going on at the University of Chicago, which is where we started off focusing, but then we started evolving it. So we were bringing in guests really from all sorts of different institutions and backgrounds. And, and if they really had some research 
um, that was compelling and interesting. We wanted to showcase it and do it in a way that, that was accessible in the way that Big Brains was helping us make it. So, you know, I actually joined this podcast a year after it started. I don't know if I ever told you this, but when I had to listen to the podcast in preparation for the interview, um, and I think everyone does this when they listen to podcasts, I develop this mental picture of what you look like. And I'll say I was pretty shocked when I walked into the interview with you. I had pictured beard, sort of like tweed jacket. Really? Um, like pipe, maybe smoking on a pipe, like <laughs> by a fireplace kind of vibe. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that I sound like a rumpled old man smoking <laughs> a pipe. That's a youthful old man. I could say that is absolutely not what you look like, actually, <laughs> um, in any way, shape or form. I won't spoil for our listeners. I'm sure they all have their own mental projection of what you look like. Um but if anyone wants to see, they can actually find a picture on our website. Um, I don't think people often get to check out our website. You know, we're a podcast. People uh, usually find us through Apple or Spotify. But they should go to see a picture of you. And while they're there, there's actually a lot of really cool merch and a lot more that people can check out on that website if they've never been there before. Well, you know, the, we, the, the idea for the quote unquote merch came up a few years ago. Um, and, and I think my favorite of all of them is this giant shopping bag we have. I think it says um, superfood for your brain or something along those lines. Yeah. In true podcast tradition, we've created tote bags for the show that people can get. <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, uh, uh, this is probably a, a, a question uh, of like, who's your favorite child? But, I, but I'm wondering after all of these episodes, do you have any that really just stand out to you that, that are special to you? Well, there's actually so many episodes to go through. Like there's a hundred of them. Oh my God. But our team has actually developed a fun and interesting little tool that can help uh, help me and our listeners, new and old, figure out which episodes they might want to listen to. It's this interesting little quiz. So I don't know if you've noticed, Paul, but our cover art actually changes color every single episode. I have noticed that. Yeah, we have yes. we've different colors for the cover art. And we've used those colors to separate our episodes into different categories, like red brains and green brains and yellow brains. And the quiz can help people identify what kind of brain you are. So, for instance, um, I'm a violet brain, which means that I – enjoy wrestling with conflicting pieces of information to find ways to improve society. And then we've listed out a whole bunch of episodes that fall into that category. I don't know. Did you take the quiz, Paul? I, I did. And, and and honestly, I was a violet brain as well. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing that we have the same color brains. Violet brains um, for life. Violet brains. I think it's a fun exercise and I, and I've played with it in different ways. And I, I love seeing the different episodes that come up, but you know, as I, as I look through the list, you know, I think through, We've had Dana Suskind on who talks about how talk builds babies' brains. And that and she not only is just an extraordinary person, but but her research about the importance of language is really there. Look, the first three years of life are just the most rapid and critical periods of growth for brain development. And the science is there. It is so robust. Incredible research. I had no idea. That seems like the kind of thing I would know, but, you know, it, it, sometimes it's hard for this important research to get out there. But, you know, in that episode, she also talks about how these ideas and these um, discoveries she's made should make us rethink, you know, our standards and policies around how we think about parents. Absolutely. Um, and and really how we invest in, in education for kids. For generations, we've had this disconnect between our public at attention and sort of investment, which really has focused on education being in the K-12 space. It means that we've skipped over those first three years of life, which are the foundations for all of our thinking and learning. We have a, another fellow here that leads something called the Crime Lab by the name of Jens Ludwig. And he was explaining why crime and violent crime was increasing, not only across the country, but in Chicago. I walked off thinking, I understand it in a way I never understood it before. And that I found that really, really compelling to me. When we you know, work with local schools to implement programs like Youth Guidance is Becoming a Man, the result is kids who participate in the programs, their high school graduation rates go up by 20%. The rate at which kids are involved in the criminal justice system declines, and the violence in their communities declines as well. Uh, and then I can go all the way to somebody that we had on, like a woman called Peggy Mason, 
who's a professor that talks about empathy and, and studied empathy and actually helps you understand empathy by what she studied in rats. And so what we found was that if a, a white albino rat had lived with a black cape rat, just one, he'd help any black cape rat. Mm. But if he had never seen a black cape rat before, he would never help a black cape rat. So that was really quite amazing, but it suggests that there's this incredible effect of environment. And the fact that, that number one, anything about rats that we could find interesting, I didn't think, but that she can make it so compelling. And so what we did was we took these albino pups on the day they were born, and we put them into a litter with black caped rats. Hmm. So when they were adults, they had never seen another albino rat. And then the question was, who would they help? Well, of course they helped the black cape rats because they'd lived with them all their lives. The real question was, would they help an albino rat? And the answer was no. Um, I think it's quite natural to think about types of rats, types of individuals, and think of race. And I think that the lessons that we've learned from the rats is, are, are just so wonderful because what they tell us is that we can control this simply by diversifying our environment. I, I could go on and on for every one of these people of finding something that I found so interesting about that what they were saying. But, but that's the joy to me of, of doing this work. Yeah, I think something your answer touched on and gets to when episodes are doing multiple things at once. So like I think about the um, Manasi Deshpande episode about her research showing that SSI benefits, which is one kind of welfare, is really successful at reducing crime and keeping people out of jail. I think the main thing that was surprising was the magnitude of these effects on criminal justice involvement. We see an immediate increase in criminal justice involvement and then persistence of that effect for the next 20 years among the young people who were removed from SSI benefits. You know, what I loved about that episode is it hit on so many different missions of what this show is all about. You have this incredibly well done research project that gives us an answer to one of society's most controversial questions. But it also digs into how research is designed, what clean data looks like, what experiments require to be valid, and why sometimes answering questions that seem so obvious are actually really difficult from a scientific perspective. There had been a series of articles published about supplemental security income, in particular the children's program. And I read these articles and it was clear that there was no real empirical evidence about the effects of this program. And it seemed important to me to have actual empirical evidence rather than just anecdotes to base public policy on. You know, that other layer of learning, I think, is so important for people that don't live in this world, uh, this world of academia, but are kind of interested in taking the key insights and um, that scientific thinking. You can apply that to your life in so many different ways. Well, it's been an incredible journey so far. I'm so excited for what's to come. Do you think we should give our audience a sneak peek? You know, you know, I, I, I think they've earned it and they're probably tired of listening to us uh, drone on here. So, yeah, let's get let's give a sneak peek. So when Big Brains returns, I know you've all enjoyed our re-release episodes, but we will be coming back with new content. Um, we're going to be introducing a special series on the podcast. Well, it's called uh, The Day Tomorrow Began, which we thought was a really compelling title to explain some interesting things. Absolutely. You know, tomorrow is where we spend most of the time on this podcast, talking about how new research and breakthroughs today will change the future. Every tomorrow, of course, has a beginning, and sometimes that beginning happened in our distant past. But in so many cases, you can look back and say, man, when, when this happened, this discovery was made, or this insight was created, it changed the trajectory of a field or change the trajectory of human life. And finding that moment or moments that led to that is a really, really compelling thought. And I think particularly here at the University of Chicago, that's happening of shaping and defining fields on, on a really regular basis. I had no idea before I started digging into the research on some of these things, um, how surprising and how um, unexpected these discoveries are and the stories behind them. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take you there. You know, we're gonna use sound, we're going to use tape, we're going to use storytelling to take you back to these moments, the day tomorrow began. And it's going to be a special limited historical series on the podcast where we go to these defining moments for many of these fields and ideas that we have talked about in the show um, with a special emphasis on the contributions of the University of Chicago. 
Excellent. Well, and I think as importantly is we're not going to just dwell on the period of the past, but also, and probably as importantly, look at where it's taking us and, and, and where are those discoveries are leading us going into the future. Um, and, and that's equally compelling about, about what's happening today and what's going to be happening the day after. Yep. So we're going to be exploring these ideas and more in the coming months with The Day Tomorrow Began. So stay tuned for that. Well, and this is going to be an effort across all areas of the University of Chicago. You're going to learn more on our news page, where we're going to have detailed what we call explainers. Um, You're going to follow along for additional information on our social media accounts. And and a lot of energy has actually gone into creating really succinct but compelling videos that will be up on our YouTube page and on social media that will work to bring these whole ideas to life in a a really super compelling way. Yep. Yep. We're really excited. So think it's only right that we end this quick celebration of the podcast by thanking you, our audience. You're the ones who make Big Brains possible. You're the ones who keep this show going um, in so many different ways through your support. So to all our guests, our listeners, and everyone who supports the podcast, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Help people discover the podcast. The one thing that comes out of this is is having new people learn about this and so if you happen to go on apple podcast page or wherever you listen to it and post a review or rating or just share it with a friend helping people discover this research is really one of the joys of doing it thanks so much for listening The Big Brains Podcast is funded in part by Craig Newmark Philanthropies, whose mission is to support trustworthy journalism and combat misinformation. If you or someone you know is passionate about this podcast, consider purchasing Big Brains merchandise or giving a donation. Big Brains is not for profit and your generosity directly supports the production and promotion of this podcast. Visit BigBrainsPodcast.com for ways to give. Big Brains is a production of the University of Chicago Podcast Network. If you like what you heard, please leave us a rating and a review. The show is hosted by Paul M. Rand and produced by me, Matt Hodap, and Leah Cesarine. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.